What is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? It's another Rappy Up League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys for day two action from the Swiss stage. And we shall just dub this day Yone Day because absolute menace on the rift. Seven of the eight games he was on the rift and seven, all seven of those games, he was probably the scariest champion on the rift. I thought we were going to label this one uh, Nightmare for the LCS or something along those lines for the West, but you're not wrong claiming that it is Yone Day out there on the Rift, seeing him in all those games and seeing just how powerful this champion is in some of these incredibly skilled hands. Yes, Yone Day is a very fitting way to describe what we saw out there on the Rift today. And let's start with the only game that he actually lost on the day. Not because of the Yone, because your boy Caps was looking absolutely terrifying on that pick. The problem is uh, Zeka had 225 stacks on Smolder pre-20 minutes. Despite G2 getting three Barons, including a miraculous blind steal out of Yike in this one just can't get it done north of 40 minutes against Hanwha. A 10 and 0 smolder with Infernal Soul is uh, you can't team fight territory. The unfortunate, the worst thing about this matchup for G2 is that for those last 20 minutes, you're the better team. You absolutely outplayed the competition in those stages and finding ways to keep yourself in the game and not just in the game being in that kind of weighing toe-to-toe -to -toe type of thing on that line of who has the edge of that situation given how bad that early game those first 20 minutes go for them and what type of advantage just go over in the side of Hanwha life and specifically Zeka getting mega off to the races on that smolder picking up big time stacks and again how many times do we have to ask Riot, is it really fair to give one of the best scaling champions in the game a lot of the abilities of some of the most mobile and, and you know, agile champions as well to escape away from all that danger? Yeah, they're lucky that Yone was such a menace today because otherwise I think people would be talking about Smolder more being absolutely out of control, surviving this... 80 carry meta in the mid lane going away. Smolder is not in that same category, but uh, so close for G2. And they were trying to be cheeky and avoid fighting this Smolder, I imagine. But not once, but twice you had vital teleports get canceled by members of Hanwha. And that's a real pain point because that's, again, playing into everything that you can go back in this game and find small little moments, small little things where, again, not necessarily about an outplay or a spectacular thing, just a simple coincidence that it happens to be that you find these informations, that you find the things, and you do get these cancels coming through against G2. You know that the game plays out differently. These key fights play out way differently if you're able to get those teleports up. And, you know, again, we're left saying, well... There were positives to take out of G2, so let's just roll on with the heart heartbreak for the West. Move to a little bit of Team Liquid Weibo Gaming, where much like G2, Team Liquid, they're being proactive. They're in the driver's seat. They're controlling this game, and the theme today, aside from Yone, also just felt like Western teams... Not being able to stay completely locked in laser focused from play to play because you have a solid play, you control an objective, you get ahead, but then someone's getting caught out. Someone's recalling in a bad spot or just losing focus on the bigger picture. And that to me is one of the biggest separations between the Eastern teams and the West. It's that guy at the gun range that is very calm, cool, collected, making all of his shots. That's the first 15 minutes or so of this one for Team Liquid. And then you get to the shot where it's all hot shot. It's just loose cannon all over the place, trying anything to get through. And that's where so many mistakes come in. So many of these opportunities that you are giving over little bits, little pieces, little chunks of power to where then the Weibo composition is able to enact, able to control how you are going to set up and be around any of these later objectives based off of their composition, based off of having that Orianna in the hands of Xiaohu and how he's able to control it. What, you know, when Breathe, which again, Breathe had a fantastic game in this series, being able to control things with the Narbar, getting it in the right timing, right situations to be that threat, be that meatball when it needed to be for the side of Weibo. 
unfortunate for Team Liquid because they are clearly, after the game against LMG and this one early against Weibo, good enough to beat a third, a fourth seed from the LPL. It's whether they can execute that at the end of the day is still a defining question for the LCS. And unfortunately, once again, the answer is no. It's, and it's, you know, the parallels are so similar from that first matchup against LNG, where it, it honestly feels like nerve shakiness, unable to just do the minor, not minor, the micro executions in landing abilities, being on the same page as a team, which is, is tough to see, but again, good enough that they could have won, but we've been saying that a lot. They didn't come away with the win. We'll end the LCS misery with this FlyQuest matchup against D+. This was a pretty wacky draft with the Amumu coming in, uh, and then the Silas out of Showmaker to just steal all these disgusting ARAM level ultimates and this looked like this was going to be a 20 minute stomp and then FlyQuest miraculously gets back into this game because Masu has some clean team fighting on Ash and then this is the game where someone gets caught recalling and all of a sudden it's Baron and the game's over. It is over just as fast as it ever got close and interesting and this one is the way that you have to feel about FlyQuest D plus Kia. What a showdown that we had because Yes, it was one of these ones where there were lots of mistakes from the LCS early. It was all about how Lucid, how Showmaker, and even, heck, go down to the bottom lane, check in with aiming and on what they were doing and what type of advantages you wanted to have in the side of D plus Kia. Played it up. Some miraculous team fights, some proactive choices from this FlyQuest squad. Again, that Amumu pick being something different in the way that it was able to, to get into some of these fights combined with Masu's positioning. You're right back in it until, of course, yes, caught out on a ward. One of, oh, is that, where is that on the LCS bingo? Is that, you know, N42? Is that, oh, 55? Where are we going on the bingo card? The bingo that, card you... is like triple sided and like 4D at this point for oh. the LCS. But listen, this game, I had a bad feeling when your level one Darius is popping both summoners in a 1v3. I'm like, ah. Okay, Whipple's gonna have one of those games, and sure enough, he did. Yeah, and again, not necessarily just even painting the picture of that type of, you know, solo queue situation type of thing. You're throwing Whippo into that equation, and again, there is a history for him, especially on the international stage, to go for something, to go for, you know, a different angle, a different path than everybody else. And is the execution there is always going to be the big question because he has had enough times where he's pulled it off, sure, to his credit. I've seen a lot of whoopsies and a lot of yuglies out there. And this one, I think, goes in the whoopsie category at the very least. How about the only actual, I'm going to say, upset on the day that was some high quality stuff? This was an LPL Civil War BLG. I think most people were picking as the undefeated squad to go through, but LNG said no. We paid a few mil for Scout to be here. Thank you, Mr. Gala and friends. And this is why you paid the big bucks. In a day of impressive Yone for performances, Scout absolutely takes the cake for this one. And I did not expect this one from Scout. It's certainly a champion that we have seen him utilize before and be, you know, kind of within the realm of what you can expect from him. But to really showcase it this time around at Worlds and how he was able to execute, how he was able to carry for this LNG squad in the face of not just BLG. We're talking about Orianna on the other side. Fortnite, again, one of the very best in the world on this champion. Uh, incredible damage numbers that can come through with it. No problem for that Yone. Incredible lethality from him and the way that he is able to dip, dance, and dodge through all these team fights and get you know, right back into safety again. All these things set up everybody else. Scout was phenomenal on a day of outstanding Yones. He is the one that takes the cake. And I know, you know, LNG and Weibo, even though LNG 3-0'd them in the gauntlet, we were kind of looking at them at a similar power level. How would this drama for Scout affect what the practice was heading towards this? But I haven't seen BLG be out team fought like they were in this game. Probably since MSI against Gen G. It's an important reminder of kind of, you know, both ways that this thing plays out is one, BLG, yes, despite how elite and dominant they were throughout the LPL, they were shaken up. They were tested at various times where a series did end up having to go the distance or whatever it was until 
BLG is ultimately the winner most of these times, but they certainly were tested. And LNG is one of those squads that was able to shake the BLG tree, was able to push them deep down into what they had to try and, and see how they could fare in that series. Best of one today, hot stuff, the Yone, all good enough for LNG to take this one. It was also good enough for the Gen G boys, despite a little bit of a rough start because Mr. 369 was cooking to a 6 and 0 start. He had a 3K individual lead over Keen on the Rumble in this matchup. The problem was, I don't think he landed a single good Rumble ulti. So, yeah, the gold lead doesn't really matter if you don't land the ability. That's the problem with something like Rumble. You can get as hot as you want. You can get that flame spitter spitting all the way through in that top side. And make no mistake, 369 was doing that. Those early advantages, that lead that he's able to get is massive for top esports and an important thing to keep track of at this event and where you're you know, judging their power level and everything else. It runs out of steam as we get to that mid game, as we get to these important team fights and especially the way that Gen G is able to coordinate and play around these team fights and utilize their vision and their skills to the full extent. It was game over and you laid out as well. It didn't hit a single one of these ultra rebel ultimates in any type of way. You know, you have this huge fight where everyone is, you know, limping back top esports is trying to get back to their own turret. And then all of a sudden Pace just comes diving in on a Kai'Sa, picks up a kill and nobody puts a hand on him after that one, including the old rumble ult just laying right down there in the red in the red buff zone not doing a single thing to Pays. he was trying to predict where he was headed but uh pays on kaisa was an absolute treat to watch in these team fights a hundred percent kill participation on an 80 carry is absolutely nutty especially uh that one team fight around the red buff as you mentioned both pays and chovy just play that so disgustingly clean and again, you know, to say that we had already the best Zone on the day from uh, Scout, Chovy puts in quite a considerable mention for that one with his performance. Again, something we expect from Chovy, this Yone pick and how he is able to utilize it. But again, just showing up at the right moments, the disruption that he's able to provide with the ultimate. It's over, man. Do not let anybody else get a handle on this champion unless they're the LCS. The LCS needs all the help we can get. But everybody else, ban this ban this champ. Get him out of here. I'm sure you can go through every single game today. Look at those first three bans. Sub one of them out, and you're fine, even if you think it's a real power pick. And put that Yone in there, and I promise you, you're in a better situation. I'm just waiting for a global ban to improve viewership numbers even more out of Riot uh, as we go forward. Be honest, Mark. Were you sweating when Pain Gaming 2v2 killed Guma Kiria with the Draven Renata combo? I, I'd love to say that my faith was unshaken, that I was a, as ready and proud as T1 as ever. I was worried. I was absolutely worried because, again, you know how serious the Swiss stage is if you get off to one of these 0-2 starts and how dangerous a position that can put you in and what type of, you know, then you put it up to luck and odds of who you're matching up with and drawing type of situation you gotta take advantage when you have a mismatch which this clearly was and early it didn't look like that given that you you laid it out chichet in the bottom lane making the damage come through making guma regret not respecting the damage that was able to come through but what you saw throughout this game and, and later on you know again changed pretty Gilman. quickly <laughs> It, it absolutely did. And it was a difference between able to, to make these individual plays and then what happens in between them. How do you string them along? How do you orchestrate the symphony of the, the game and the route to destroying the enemy nexus? It was a jarbled mess coming through from Pain Gaming from all these points onwards. And every single time there was a counterpoint, a counter answer from T1 and a place where they were getting further and further ahead till eventually it's just wallet first wallet, and we all know how that story plays out against the LCK. Yeah, 14 out of the 15 turret plates that they could get, T1 nabbed in this one. And over the history, you know, T1 has had heartbreaking, crushing losses, sure. But in huge mismatch favorite matchups, they dismantle these lower tier teams like nobody else in the history of the game. Just take this one into the mental bank and, and check this one away and remember, yes, this is exactly why we don't have the fourth seed from the LCK or the LPL 
participate in play-ins anymore. We learned yeah. that lesson one year around. Saw the dominance. Uh, we don't. We need to. We can skip those. Ones. Uh, the day wrapped up. A little MS or not MSI. A little play-in stage rematch. MDK versus PSG. EU's going. Yes, we drew PSG easy. Dismantling. Just let Maple have Yone. That shouldn't be an issue. At uh, that was an issue, and there were a lot of issues for MDK. First and foremost, it seemed like they never woke up. Where's the electric, electrifying Mad Lions? They're picking Galio top? Huh? And this is a matchup where you needed to be as locked in and fired up if you are the Mad Lions Koi ahead of you against PSG. The rematch from the play-in stage. Again, one where you had the edge. You had the advantage. You won. You were good. In that situation, you had to know that there was some tool retweaking, some tooling around for PSG the next time they'd be going around, how they wanted to approach it, how they wanted to prioritize certain things. You knew that that adaptation would be there, not just from the organization, but specifically you had to uh, expect that from someone like Maple, as experienced as he is on the international stage, that exposure, that level of understanding how things change and just how impactful an individual player can be if he's on that beat and he was on the beat today, the way that he was beaten down on the rest of the Mad Lions court. And you, you needed that extra fire because you knew PSG was going to be extra motivated to get some fresh revenge that was basically a week ago that they're trying to get some redemption. They absolutely absolutely did to move to one and one. And that is zero and four on the day for the West. But luckily, we had the good old black and gold fanatic matching up against GAM Esports. And if you were sweating from pain getting a 2v2 kill against T1... What was happening when Kiaya was three levels ahead of Oscar in it at this point? I've seen this movie from EU before. Top laner down multiple levels early to GAM? Oh, no. It was. I was feeling like this one was going to be game over. But luckily, luckily, we're forgetting. Yonik is on the side of the West for this time around. And it is not gonna be just like g2 and caps humanoid finding the angles finding some pain against uh this squad against what was gam's best early start they could hope and you know oscar Rinnan, the level one dive is terrible he gets solo killed it's bad but he gets completely abandoned by fanatic but because of that you know the zigs they actually play properly around noah he gets an insane amount of plates he individually had like a 1.5k gold lead and despite being irrelevant for 25 minutes oscar Rinnan is still able to find some good engages in team fights oh don't you love that don't you love that realization and again this is not like any type of shade of, of going that guy's dead weight C yeah. cut him cut him loose uh, don't invest ignore Leave that lane. Yeah, yeah. absolutely and find everything else especially when you had a composition like the one that fanatic did and you had the option in that zigs to invest and in, get those times get those plates down and start pushing that momentum that was a big part of it for fanatic i also want to uh, again of course you're talking about humanoid doing a good job you know we're talking about june on the zig razor in the jungle a big part of it big time clutch team fights for him i think is a big part of where you find this pendulum swift shift over for fanatic to be in the driver's seat so we're rapid fire into the next day of action draws after every single day. It's the 2-0 squads that are going to get things started. We've got Hanwa Gen G in an LCK Finals rematch and LNG versus D plus Kia in maybe the two teams that are the more surprised 2-0 starts. Yeah, I, I, look, I, either way you slice it, we're getting the best of threes here for the 2-0s is the way these ones lay out. The rematch of the LCK final. I'm thrilled to see that one at this point. I know some people get tired of, of these, you know, same region wars, you know, civil war type of situations. Not this one for me because of how it plays out. And I think that what you're looking at here is a Gen G that again, Chovy, Canyon, K's, all check marks, check mark, check marks. You know, Lahan's pretty good. You got a kind of a red circle around Keen right now after that last performance, and especially the way the 369 is able to get ahead. Be worried about that one. But on the flip side, it's not like Doran and Peanut have been phenomenal 
for Hanwha Life early. This has really been the Zeka show in the mid lane. And that is going to be a problem because, again, in the in the playoff series, he was a thorn in the side. He was one of these guys moving that engine along. Not the only one, though. So that is going to be an important thing to see in this best of three. If someone else from Hanwha Life can step up. Or are, is Zeka's shoulders strong enough to put the whole of the organization on his shoulders? Ban Yone. For both of these squads, you're seeing Chovy, you go, Ban Yone. You're seeing Zeka, you go, Ban Yone. I'm, I'm going to asterisk add on Smolder to that one. Yeah. He's tagged along. He is the additional, he's the little brother hanging out with Big Bro for the day. Again, he, he gets the tag on that one. Same champ pool there for both Chovy and Yone. So a bit of a double whammy. Uh, the one and one matchups, obviously, flashing red matchup on the screen is T1. BLG crazy to get that matchup in the one and one zone. I'm not prepared for this. What type of roller coaster are they trying to put me on here? Going with T1. You know, At main... least only one game. Just one. It is only one game. That is a benefit of, of this wild simulation that we end up here with both of these ones. The path that they have taken to one and one. I think there is absolutely something to be said for the leveling up that T1 you know, refines their form, refines their footing against Pain Gaming. You know, yes, Pain Gaming with the... the pain the to BLG. Massive step up in, in expectations and in how sharp you're going to have to be in this series. It's not just BLG. This is a BLG that needs to retool themselves, pick themselves back up and say, okay, that was a bit of a, a whoopsie shakedown that we've received from LNG. How do we respond at this point? Do they make it, you know, are they gonna are we gonna swap in the jungle again type of thing to change pace whatever you got to be prepared for this one if you are t1 then these zero and twos the west gets lucky in the draw tl versus pain mdk versus gam if either the lcs or lec get eliminated in this matchup get out you don't deserve to be here go home and I, that's almost been a theme for, for some of these LCS squads when you're talking about what you've had to go up against on both ends of the spectrum now. Because we've had third, fourth seed LPL, and it has certainly been one of those challenges to go, hey, you envision yourself in the top eight of this tournament? you got to find a way to displace one of these guys or, or either one of them. And you know what? You showed that you can do it. You just didn't do it in your execution and the mistakes that you made through that one. How do you pick yourself up off the floor in that situation to know then, okay, you can't ever overlook or underestimate one of these opponents, especially now that you are in this Swiss stage. Everybody, I think, has that ability to level up. And if you're on a bad day, shake you off. But you got to be careful. Keep an eye on that one if you are Team Liquid. Again, FlyQuest in the other matchup as well. I, even the coaching staff might need a little bit of a, a break and a breather to see how Spawn was, you know, slamming down that yeah, water bottle. Don't give him any glass in there, okay? No. <laughs> but hey, only last year Team Liquid was getting eliminated in this very spot by Gam. So no, I don't. I we do not need those reminders for Team Liquid. This would be so unbelievably just unfortunate and frustrating, and I can understand the mad, you know, angry and, and hating side of type of things. But to see a team that is so clearly a level up from what we are usually seeing in the Western regions, especially in the LCS, one that has continued an improvement chart that you can look back on and, and check in with individual players, the team, all these type of things, and to have a similar result at the end of the day, that same uh, painful scoreline that you see on the scorecard is going to be unacceptable to so many people and just take away all the positives that we have seen from this group. Two O's first on the docket, then the one and ones, and the O two elimination matches on the Monday. Full steam ahead for a little bit more Western disappointment over the weekend, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mike here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.